G'day guys, Grundy here with another story or recollection of some people I know in bodybuilding. As you know, the first three have been very positive because I've got positive things to say about so many people. Today's one's not going to be positive. It's a person I do not like and by the end of this you will understand why. And that is Mike O'Hearn, affectionately nicknamed by me Bald Spot, which is stuck. Welcome Mike, you're welcome. That's what you get when you mess with someone who you shouldn't mess with homeboy. So let's backtrack. As a kid growing up in Australia, I admired and looked up to Mike O'Hearn. Good looking guy, great physique, strong, athletic. He's the man. Unfortunately, with people that you look up to, you meet them. And he is up there with the biggest disappointments as someone I admired and looked up to. And he was just the biggest, fakest, wanker that I've ever met. Maybe not that I've ever met, because there's a few, but he's up there. He's in the leading pack. He's up there with them. And he's just known in the industry as a joke and as a comedy for the fact that he proclaims that he's natural at 270 pounds, six foot four. He's been like that all his life. He's, near to, he's over 50 now, still looks the way he looks, and bench presses 500 pounds, squats 600. So... He goes on saying he's natural. So that's cool. It's good for marketing, and I understand that. And so does everyone in the industry. But then with everyone in the industry, he acted like he was really natural. Like, dude, we don't mind you pretending because it's understandable for business, but we know. Or don't even bring it up because we don't care, but don't try to flaunt it in people's face that you're better than they are because you're natural, Mike. You're not natural, buddy. Your nickname's Mike O'Tren. And I called you Bald Spot. And this is another story about Mike, so you know. I did a story on him for Muscle Mag. And to get any pictures of Mike, Robert Kennedy was, and Gino were insistent. They're like, make sure you get Mike to sign a disclaimer saying we can use his photos. Because Mike had the habit of running a story and giving them pictures and then suing the magazines for using his pictures. So yeah, so I had to get that signature from him. I did the interview and he's like, hey, let's get together for lunch and hang out together. And you know, I, well, that's cool, Mike. You know, I don't really like him, but hey, I'm going to try. So I text him back, hey, yeah, let's get together for lunch. I never hear from him, which is cool, which is fine. And then I'm at the gym with him. This is the final straw. And I was like, bro, you're a wanker. You're such a loser. We're at the gym doing cardio at Gold's Gym in Venice. And we're doing cardio together up on the top, top area. And I'm sitting there with him and um, I'm like, you know, effort. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell him how I feel. And I just said, hey, man, I just want you to know that uh, I read about you in the magazines when I was younger. And then you had a Jeep, a Jeep Wrangler. And I've always wanted a Jeep Wrangler because you had it. It looked so cool parked out the front of goals. And I said, and I've got that today, Mike. I've got that. I've got a Jeep Wrangler. And you know what Mike says to me? He looks at me. He picks up his phone. He goes, oh, yeah. And starts showing me pictures of himself from when he was modelling hot skins and, and, and all these other pictures. I'm, I'm just sitting there. I got off the bike and I walked away and I never spoke to the guy again. Actually, that's not true. I did speak to him to make fun of him at a party, which I'll bring up. So, yeah, that's what the guy is so self-centred. Here I am like, bro, you're an inspiration. I admired you and I had what you had. And he just ruined the moment for me. So another story is uh, we're at a party in Malibu Hills at a, a really popular guy within the group. I'm not going to mention names. And where we're, Mike turns up and I'm there with all the guys in fitness and whatever. We're just hanging around and then Mike's got his big jug of uh, crystal light or his water, whatever it is, his rejuvenation fluid. And he would leave it on the thing at the table and then would walk around and leave it there talking to people. I don't know what he was doing. But all I know is his drink bottle was there and no one liked him at all at this party. They all hated it. it we laughed at him. So everyone really <laughs> loved what I was doing. I would go and I'd pick up his drink bottle and I'd hide it. I would go move it somewhere. At first, they were easy spots just from one area to the next. And thankfully for me, Mike just kept thinking he's Mr. Social Butterfly. We're all watching the fights. Mike's interrupting it by just walking back and forth. Like he's doing it like he's a model or something. We're just like, God damn, we want to watch the fight, bro. We don't want to look at you. We're looking at muscle and fitness if we want to see you, Mike. So we, I kept moving his drink. So he comes back and you can see he's getting annoyed. And I'm, I'm actually thinking, we're going to have words. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. 
and he leaves again and I hide again. And I went and hid this under the bar. My mate had a really, he's a wealthy guy, he had a big house on the Malibu there overlooking it. So I've gone and hid it under the bar and put it in the corner. He's like a sniffer dog or something with his, his rejuvenation food because he comes in there and you can see he's looking puzzled and everyone in there is just trying not to laugh at him because we're, we're all enjoying it. One mate's like, Grundy, that's too much, man. You're pushing it too far. I'm like, no, man, let's see how far we can ride this out. So in my mind, if he keeps leaving that bottle there, he's either going to walk in and catch me doing it and then say, what am I doing? I'm going to be, I'm hiding your water bottle or he's going to take it with him. So... I hide it, he comes back, I can't believe that he's found it, I'm amazed. I want him to go so I can go, guys, I can't believe he found it. So he finds it and he walks off with it and he keeps it with him. He's actually got the bottle attached to him 24 seven. So I thought that was really, really funny. So I've got to also do another one of these regarding a fight challenge and accusations of me being a, a woman beater and stating that I had charges against me which was all totally incorrect and untrue. I've never been charged with such a thing. I've been married to the same woman for 18 years. But I'm going to bring that story up. You can Google this uh, YouTube search it because, you know, there's videos of him challenging me and calling me these things. So on my next one, I'm going to talk about that. And normally I wouldn't do it because I'm a forgive and forget guy. But Mike never apologised. Accused me of stuff that I didn't do, which was made out to be wrong. Challenged me for a fight and just walks away like it doesn't matter. So had the man have been a man and said, hey, Grundy, you know, I was out of line, mate. I apologize. Cool, bro, I respect you, thank you. But I never got that. So now I'm like a little child tagging on it, okay? So bald spot. Oh, the other thing about my boy, Mike, why do I call him bald spot? Because he's got a bald spot on the back of his head and he's had at least three hair transplants to cover it. And after our situation, when I called him bald spot, he got that fixed. So, Mike, you're welcome for bringing attention to the bald spot, Mr. Perfect. Problem about acting perfect is, buddy, need to be perfect. Having a bald spot on the back of your head, not the way to be perfect. So, anyone disbelieves me with the bald spot? If someone accused me of being bald, I would go on and do a video and I would show, I'd say, look, touch my head. And I will prove that I haven't got a bald spot with all little, little hair weaves or whatever you want to call it that stick into your head. So that's on the back of Mike's head. So imagine the girl running a finger through his head. He's like, oh, Mike, you're so... <coughs> my hand's stuck! My hand's stuck! Mike, wouldn't be doing this if you had have apologised and you acted tough to the wrong person, bro.